If you're someone that's experiencing burnout or has before, tell me if you can relate to this. You get a big project with a far out due date. And even as the weeks pass, you're not stressing or working on it because you know how you are. You do your best work under pressure. As the weeks turn into days, that's when you start to feel it, but that's also when your superpower kicks in. You pull a few all-nighters, you don't eat, you go 33 hours without social media because you're just so locked in on the work. Maybe you neglect your family a little bit, but at the end of the day, you get it done by the deadline and it turned out great. The only problem is you're completely exhausted with a phone full of messages from people asking where the hell you've been. This is the burnout cycle that I have found myself in for the majority of my life and I never really understood why. But over the last few years, as my career has demanded more from me, I realized at some point I'm gonna need to figure it out. And in this video, I'm gonna help you understand exactly why you get burnt out and how to avoid it entirely. I'll give you a hint. It has nothing to do with the work and everything to do with who you are as a person. Most of us think that feeling burnt out is just a matter of working too many hours or having too much on your plate. But if that's the case, then why is it that there are people that do two times more than I do that have never felt burnt out and they're just getting started? Do they have a higher natural threshold? Is it that they wake up at 4 a.m. and cold plunge for 15 minutes? The difference between someone that feels burnt out doing a little bit and someone that thrives while doing a lot can actually be defined. Person one can be defined as a high achiever. And high achievers are all about reaching specific goals. It might be getting a promotion, winning an award, or hitting specific targets. A high achiever is likely to have the mentality that the ends justify the means. So to get to whatever goal it is that they are pursuing, they are more likely to neglect themselves neglect their social circles, and approach the project in a way that is not sustainable long-term. High achievers also tend to be extremely driven by recognition. So anytime a new project gets slid across their desk, they tend to measure it based on how much recognition it could provide them as opposed to what it could cost them. You can think of a high achieving individual as a sprinter. They build up and store energy and they're really good at letting it all go out at once. High performers, on the other hand, are different. They're focused on consistently performing at their best over time, regardless of any specific goals. High performers are going to really prioritize stability, consistent improvement, and balance. They focus on their daily systems and habits as opposed to just their end goal. High performers are more like marathon runners. They pace themselves, focus on building their endurance, and aim to perform well over the long haul of the entire race. Now, if you're like me, being told that you're a high achiever is probably one of the best compliments that you could receive. It meant that you were doing big things and that you were gonna keep doing, but no one ever told you that this aspect of your personality, this superpower of yours actually comes with some drawbacks. While the high that being a high achiever provides every time you close out one of those goals is huge and thrilling, because you're expending so much of your energy in the pursuit of one goal, it often leads to burnout. On top of that, it creates this trap where you constantly need a new goal and to reach a new goal just to feel satisfied. So it's very easy for you to overburden yourself and be stressed and exhausted perpetually. The worst part about it is the very nature of achievement means that if you did something great yesterday, and you do it again tomorrow, it's not going to be enough to fill your cup up the way that it did the first time. It's the equivalent of being a hamster on the wheel. You keep running and then you find another thing to run to, but you're always gonna have to run again just to feel good. Now, don't get me wrong. There's almost no better feeling than going on a sprint to complete a work project or something else that you're working on and finally seeing it done. But that's not to say that high achievement is where all the fun is at because being a high performer comes with its benefits as well, many of which you're probably starting to crave if you're watching this video. High performance is about finding fulfillment in the process itself, which means that you can continue to maintain your drive even if you miss or don't have a big goal to work towards. You give up the highs and the lows of high achievement, but you trade it for more predictable and sustainable daily wins. And that's not to say that just because you're not always sprinting, you aren't gonna be able to sprint when you need to. High performers are more like a dependable, well-tuned engine. They're going to run smoothly and efficiently day in and day out. And the best part is they're very rarely going to break down. But to get there, they require a consistency of maintenance and upkeep that high achievers are very likely to forego as soon as they fixate on another goal. So I've told you that there's a better way. Now it's time to show you how to walk it. I'm gonna be intentional about giving you actionable steps that you can incorporate in your day-to-day -day life to start reaping the benefits and becoming a high performer. First, you need to understand that the little things matter a lot more than you think they do. Just because brushing your teeth isn't going to give you 
you that high that working on the projects that you need to finish will doesn't mean that it's not important. The smaller impacts that that's gonna have on how you feel about yourself and by extension, how you show up for your work is going to be much bigger than you'd expect. Number two, give yourself some boundaries. If you know that you have decided that you're gonna stop working at 8 p.m. every single night and you are regularly overstepping that boundary, you can actually use that as a clue that your systems and your habits and the work that you're doing aren't appropriate for the degree of work that you're actually taking on. Establishing these boundaries can feel like you're limiting yourself, but when push comes to shove, obviously you can show up in the way that you need to. And they're gonna give you a a really accurate way of pulse checking how much you're actually doing and whether or not what you're doing is what you should be doing. The last step is to keep things exciting. One of the biggest problems that I've experienced as a overachiever, high achiever, whatever, is that doing the small things that I need to continue to maintain myself and my momentum just feel boring. If you're looking to transition to high performance, you have to understand that what's important is that those things get done, not necessarily that you do them in some cases. If there are things that need to happen happen daily in your business or in your job, explore how you might be able to take those things off of your plate so that you have more mental energy to push through the things that only you can do, showering, brushing your teeth, etc. And you have more time to engage with the things that actually excite you. The goal here is not for you to stop achieving or stop being a high achiever, but it's for you to start building the muscle that allows you to achieve highly every single day and reshaping how you define achievement. This is an adjustment that I'm being intentional about making every single day. And sometimes it's a struggle, but over time I'm seeing the adjustment align. I hope that you have the same experience. And if you're looking for ways to do more of the right stuff with less of your own time and energy, subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos, and I'll catch you on the next one.